I'd like to welcome everybody to week four video tutorial, penciling your page. This is probably the most exciting step in the entire process because today begins the process of you finishing your page. So everything you've worked on up until now comes together and you're working on your final version of your pages. So no matter what type of template you've chosen from picture book to chapter book to graphic novel or comic book, it all comes together now and penciling your page is probably the most um, um, important part as well because you are working towards the end goal of creating your vision for your story. Today what we're going to be doing is talking a little bit about penciling your page. We've got a little bit of a different format here this week. Uh, we're going to be also looking at color. Now we've distributed colored pencils to all the schools. Colored pencils is only one choice of medium that you have. If you have another preferred choice of medium, and what medium is, is what you're using to color your book with. If you have another per, you know, preferred method, that's okay. If you want watercolor, maybe you have paint, whatever your choices are, even crayons. So take your time in this process. This is when everything comes together, like I said. Um, you should have, by now, completed your storyboard. You should also have had all your characters drawn out. You should know exactly what your characters look like. You should also write a, written a little bit about your characters in terms of understanding um, more in depth about them, who they are, what their likes are, how they fit into your story. Now at Belfry High School here recently, I saw some great work today in Molina uh, Elementary. Some really, really great work from students there. And this is all about you. This is about your work. What we're going to do is take everyone's work at the end of this, we're going to pull it together, we're going to uh, bind those, and the students that have put the most time and energy and effort into this, you don't know what could happen. Um, there's a potential for your book to even become published or produced in large quantities. We could have those books for, um, for uh, display in book signings there locally uh, in your region or even uh, on a larger scale. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities right now for you if you take this serious. So hopefully by now you have. Now, to start off with today, I want to tell you a little bit how we're going to do this. Up here on the screen, we have a smart board. And I know everyone's familiar with the smart board. There should be one in every school now, in every classroom. We're going to be penciling a finished page here. Then we're going to be jumping over to a, another um, angle, and we're going to work with colored pencil. But remember, if you have a preferred medium, so if you'd rather use watercolor, use watercolor. But still, watch this entire tutorial because you'll learn things with color later on that you can use that will help you even if you're using paint, okay? Uh, before we start, I want to share with everyone this book that I um, illustrated. This came out last weekend. Now, this is a hardbound book. It's published by Bellamy Fleming Publishing. It's written by uh, Melinda and Julia Richardson. This is called Owen Owl's Wise Words. Now I showed you a little bit about this earlier today, but the interesting thing about this book is that it gives you a great example of how color is used and why penciling your finished page is important uh, when it comes to taking your time and, and using your storyboard, using the tools you've already created in order to produce that final page, okay? So what we're gonna do, we're going to uh, actually um, we're going to use a storyboard that I designed for this tutorial, and we're going to create a finished page together today here in, in the Holler Studio. And for all of you who have not got on the Holler Studio and participated very much, I hope that you will. I hope you'll consider uh, getting onto the website, communicating, sharing ideas, asking questions. It's all very, very important. That's a part of the being the community process. Um, what I have here in my hand is a storyboard that I just finished for an author's book that I'm working on. This is the most current storyboard that I've finished. I'm currently working on another storyboard for a book called Dance of the Fireflies by Mary Powell Wagner. But this storyboard here is uh, from an author that, that I, I can't tell you a lot about right now, but that's going to be revealed pretty soon. But um, this book is uh, called Holding the Light. Now, if you see here, there's boxes on these pages. Now, these boxes, each one of those represent a page for my book. By now, you should have something similar to this, whether you're working on a graphic novel, a comic book, um, whatever the template you chose, you should have a storyboard. You should also have 
this, which is the character design. Basically, character design, it just means that you're drawing out your characters on a page. You know what they look like before you start working on your final pages. Character design is really important. It goes hand in hand with your storyboard. In the storyboard, I've asked you to be very, very rough. Uh, not a lot of detail. Remember, we talked about this. So on your storyboard, I ask you to draw circles and basic shapes. So here's an example of what you might have on your storyboard. You might have a basic shape here um, to represent the characters, okay? And we'll have a few here sitting um, in chairs, maybe. Okay, so there's a few characters there, all setting, and we could put little squares in front of them to rep represent desks, maybe, okay? I'm just kind of putting this together as an example. This is what your storyboard should look like. You didn't have to be uh, going into a lot of detail with your storyboard. Up here we could put a larger desk. Maybe this is for the teacher. Up here, all right, so this could be a, uh, an example of one of your pages from your storyboard. There's not a lot of detail. But when you combine your storyboard with your character design, you have all the blueprints to knowing exactly what your page will look like once you're finished. And that is very important, okay? So let's go ahead now, and what we're going to do, we're going to design a page from a book that um, um, I just come up with out of my top of my head before starting this tutorial. It's going to be about a, uh, a tiger, okay? So let's go ahead and walk through this process together, all right? First thing we're going to do, we're going to look at our storyboard page. All right, so what I'm going to do, since we don't have the storyboard created for the tiger, I'm going to go ahead and draw out basically what the storyboard page would look like if we did. So here's the head of my tiger. I'll put this for the belly. Here's uh, one arm coming down here, another arm coming down here. Got a leg coming down this way and a leg back here, okay? Now, believe it or not, this is going to turn into a finished page of my book, all right? Also now we have the, um, imagine this is one box. This is one of your pages of your, uh, one page of your storyboard here. Just pre pretend with me. Now we're going to incorporate our setting. This is stuff you already should have done. I'm just going to go over this to give you an example. I'm going to draw some background setting in here. Tigers are often found in jungles. Um, if you were doing a completely fictional story, you may have a tiger as a character living in a neighborhood or something like that. But for the purpose of uh, this, we're going to uh, pretend that this is in its natural habitat, okay? And natural habitat for a tiger is a jungle, or there's also zoos, right? So here we're going to have what we're going to imagine to be our finished page. We're going to draw this um, as a stream of water coming down. And out here we could put some mountains coming up and then be some more um, uh, foliage or greenery here, okay? So I want you to imagine with me that what we're looking at right here is a finished page or of our storyboard, okay? This is what our storyboard page for, let's call this page one, all right? Now there's one very important thing that I ask you to do on every single panel or box of your storyboard, whether it's comic book, graphic novel, picture book, or chapter book. You also needed to think where are the words going to appear on this page. Now for me, for the purpose of this as an example, I'm going to put my words in this area right here. Let's see. Right here. This is where my words are going to appear on my page. So if you look at this page and imagine this as a storyboard box for my finished page one, you're going to see that I have the character here very roughly drawn. You're going to have the setting very roughly drawn. And you're going to know where the location of your words, uh, where they're going to appear. That's the things you need to know uh, before starting your pencil page. Now, like I said, I ask you to draw this very roughly. Sketch it out. But for your pencil page, this is where you're going to have to take time and really try to use what we call craftsmanship, which is um, trying to do your best job to make your lines nice and straight 
or if they're jagged, make them uh, just, just look very clean on the paper, okay? When you apply your color to it, or if you're doing a collage, you also want to keep in mind that this is when you take your time to make sure that you stay within the lines that you've created, or more advanced, we could say this is where you start to incorporate different uh, hues of color in order to show um, maybe what we call perspective. Remember that from our other video? You can show perspective with color as much as you can with lines, okay? All right, so we have a finished storyboard page, page one of what we could call Tim the Tiger. That's the name of our book. What we're gonna do from here, we need to go ahead and before we um, actually draw this out, okay, we're going to go through that process of drawing out our character so we know what our character looks like. Now this is stuff we've already covered, but this is gonna help you with your uh, understanding what you need to do with your pencil finish page, okay? All right, so let's go ahead now and um, I'll draw Tim the Tiger back on here and we will figure out what Tim the Tiger is going to look like, okay? Now for the purpose of this, blue is going to represent pencil, okay? This blue is actually gonna be the pencil. All right, so we're gonna draw our basic shapes. Remember the Marvel method, we talked about that? So here's our basic shapes for our character. All right, so this is going to turn into a tiger now. Um, I may add another circle here for the, for the mouth area. Believe it or not, that's gonna turn into a tiger. So now I'm gonna use black, and what black will be is pencil again, but I'm gonna fill in the details here. I'm gonna use black and blue so you can see what it looks like when I start to add the details on, okay? The first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and follow along the lines that I've already created here, right? I know exactly where I'm going to draw based on what I've already created, all right? Okay. So we go ahead and use these blue lines uh, to help you uh, guide where you're gonna put the details in on your picture, okay? Now this is part of the character design phase again. We're going to do the pencil version of the pencil page in a minute. Okay, I just want to show you all these different steps so you have an idea of what your page should look like. So here we have what hopefully looks a little bit like a tiger. And it may be a little bit hard to see right now um, the difference in the blue line and the black, but hopefully you can. It'll be a lot clearer here in a second when we move to the uh, table. All right, here's his belly there. And we're going to draw his leg coming straight down. Okay, and his toes here. His toes on this side, okay? All right, so I know what Tim the Tiger sort of looks like now anyway. And his other hand out here. There we go, there's Tim the Tiger. Now, um, when we start to color here in a little bit, we're going to uh, add a lot more detail to him. And we're gonna see how this all kind of works out and makes your character and your pages look very finished and very well done, all right? So this is uh, Tim the Tiger, all right. Before you start actually working on your pencil page, so before you take your information from your storyboard, the information from um, uh, your character design and you start working on that finished page, you want to remember to do a few things here. When you start penciling the page, draw very lightly. You may have to go back and erase. If you need to go back and erase, that's perfectly fine. You may make mistakes, but this is the time to make mistakes. Penciling your page is the time when you can make corrections to make the look of your page finished and looking good. Now today, this is something real important I want to uh, um, let everybody know and kind of inform you about. Today I saw students who had, what they had together was pages that they had written out their story. They had, um, um, drawn their pictures on, on the examples I saw were chapter books. So there was words, a lot of words. There was a picture located on the pages somewhere, a drawing, and those were stapled together. And students were under the impression that they were finished. They'd created it. Your storyboard is not your book. 
At the end of this, you should have two versions of your book. You should have the storyboard, which you used to create your finished book. And then you should have your finished pages, okay? So it's real important to not confuse this process right now at this point in the project. Your storyboard is not your finished book, all right? It seems like a lot of work, but it, it's well worth it at the end. What you'll need to do is take that storyboard and start to create your finished pages, okay? All right. So we have ca the character here of uh, Tim the Tiger. It's already ready to go. We know what the storyboard page looked like from earlier. What we're going to do now is jump in. We're going to cut over to the table, and we're going to check out and see how to pencil in your page and add color to it. Okay, so we've moved around here a little bit to kind of uh, help you... Uh, get a better angle at what penciling a finished page really looks like. Now, just a minute ago, we drew on the smart board what our storyboard will look like along with our character design. Now, based on those two things, we can, uh, and the placement of your text, your, your words on the page, we can start to pencil in your finished page. So to begin that process, I'm gonna look off my storyboard at all times. It's really important, okay? Your storyboard is your blueprints to your story, all right? So, as you're working on this, keep your storyboard right next to you. All you comic artists out there doing graphic novels or comic books, this is going to be your best friend through this whole process, the ruler. It's really important that you use the ruler to make all your lines for your panels. And if you want to find out uh, details about how to create those boxes to look nice and thick, not just one little pencil line to form a box, watch the session today that we recorded on the holler here and see how to create those panels so that they look thick and nice and bold. All right. So we're going to continue on here and we're going to use our storyboard that we created and we're going to design the page uh, that we looked at on the smart board. Okay. Now the first thing I'm going to do, this is my, now I want you to keep in mind here as we do this, this is the finished penciled version of your book. This is what your book is going to look like once you color it, okay? Just like whenever you're designing your characters, you're going to use the Marvel method in order to get the shapes right for your character. Now I'm doing this very lightly, all right? Now this is your finished page of your book. This is what the finished page is going to look like. I'm drawing Tim the Tiger here, just like our storyboard that we just created what it looks like. And I'm using the Marvel method once again in order to get these shapes just how I want them, okay? And you'll notice once I draw this out that it's going to look a whole lot like the finished character design we had on the board. The same position of the body, all that stuff, okay? Use your storyboard to help guide you. Very, very, very important. If you do that, the process of creating these finished pages will go real smooth, okay? So here I've drawn out circles, which are going to be the basic shape for Tim the Tiger. This is exactly what I did on the board. Now, before I start drawing the setting, I want to make sure that I have the character drawn. The setting is what happens behind the character or around the characters on the page, okay? Now, earlier, whenever we did this, we drew the the um, jungle behind him. So um, let's keep that in mind. So let's go ahead now and we're going to pencil in um, Tim the Tiger. Now notice I'm not pressing down very hard. See what I'm doing? I'm barely pressing down to add these details to my character. Okay? So much is already done for you when you drew those circles on there. All right? Okay. And this is also the time whenever you can go back and erase. Erasing is really important. Now I'm using the eraser on my pencil here, but you should have been supplied an eraser uh, through the project. If you haven't, uh, contact us on the holler. Let us know. We'll make sure you get your supplies. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm uh, going back. I'm correcting a little bit. Now this is my finished page of my book. This is not my character design. This is not my storyboard. This is what my finished page is going to look like, and it's how it's going to appear in the book, okay? So I add all the details in as I go. All right, so, so far we have 
Tim the Tiger here, and he kind of looks a little bit like a bear maybe, or a dog right now, but he'll look a lot more like a tiger once we start getting going here. All right, so we draw the shoulder coming out, his arm. Over here's his hand. Now, all of this stuff has already been done for you, by you, in your storyboard, okay? All right, so down here we're going to continue with his belly coming down like this. His other arm comes out, down. Okay, now once you get to the part with his leg, just continue to follow along with your circles. Remember, your circles are there to help you, you know, to guide you, to fill in all these details, okay? Now the pencil version of your page, if you notice, I'm, I'm drawing this in as I go here and I'm going to go back once I'm done and correct some things about it. I may erase a whole lot. I may not erase you know, much at all. It depends, okay, on how well it turns out, how satisfied I am with it. All right, so there's his other hand here with his thumb, and there we go. So there's Tim the tiger. That's basically the shape what he's going to look like. Now, tigers have stripes, so you can go ahead and draw those in. They have a whole lot of stripes, so have some on their tails. You want to make sure and add details of your character that you've created um, in during this process of penciling your finished page, okay? And I'm doing that right now. I'm just putting in detail to the character. That's all I'm doing. Once we have this detail down, we're going to do something really interesting with our color pencils. Now, if you're a comic artist, all of your artwork's going to be appearing in those panels we talked about. Um, after we pencil it in, that's when you would start inking your comic. You would basically just trace what you've created with your, with your Sharpie or whatever you're using to put the ink on there with. And at the end, you erase everything, okay? So here we have Tim the Tiger, okay? So now we have the character created. The next step in this is going to be to design the background. Now, if you were to look in some of my books, and you will notice that the background is very important. I'm going to show you this right here. This is Owen Owl's Wise Words. Now, you notice the background with the trees and the sky. Notice that over here, the sky is blue, and as you get this way, it turns yellow. This is to represent the part of the story where the book opens with Owen Owl waking up in his tree, okay? Now... Owls are typically nocturnal, but for the purpose of this book, Owen has to um, stay up all night in order to deal with the birds. I forgot about that point. But, but this helps set the setting anyway. You get an idea, okay? Now, the same thing with, the, with uh, Tim the Tiger here. We're going to start to draw in our background. Remember to use, use your storyboard. I can't stress that enough. Your storyboard is your blueprints to your story. Okay, notice I'm not pushing down really hard. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm just barely making these lines appear. I'm actually pushing down harder than I typically would so that you can see it on the camera, and hopefully you still can. Um, it may show up very light, but we'll do our best to make it so you can see it. So you draw in your setting behind your character, okay? Some trees, remember the mountains we talked about. All right, and over here, we'll put some more, some more green, some more foliage as we call it, vegetation. So this is gonna be either a path or a river. I haven't decided yet. I should have known that though with my storyboard, but I'm creating this on the fly for you. Up here's where the words are going to appear. We'll put the sun right here. All right, now at this step of the process, you have a penciled page. This is great. This is really all that I want you to do uh, until the next time we meet. So one of the objectives that we had until we meet next time was for you to have all of your pencil pages completed or at least at a minimum have at least half of your pencil pages completed. That means you've got exactly what it shows on your storyboard and drawn the way your characters look, how you design them. You should have all of those things 
um, pulled together and you should have created at least penciled in half of your finished pages by the next time we meet, okay? If you are really, really ambitious about this project, let's say you're highly motivated, let's say you're going to go and pencil your pages right away, and before we meet next time, you want to start coloring, this is what this tutorial deals with today too, using color on your page. So this is how the process should work. Now I'm going to use colored pencil here. The reason I'm using colored pencil, again, this is what we've distributed to the schools. If you would prefer to use another type of medium, which is what you're using to create your story, the color to your story, you can. You'll be able to pull some tips and some uh, pointers by watching me use colored pencils, though. And that's what I used to color Owen Al's Wise Words and also my first book that I actually wrote and illustrated, which is Irby's Turn to Rake. Both of these books were completed using colored pencils, okay? If you do it well enough, it almost looks like paint, which you can see here from, from the front of uh, Owen. But it's actually colored pencils, all right? The type of what we have here for you is we're sending out Crayola colored pencils for everyone. You should have sets of these to use and share. So that's what I'm using here today is colored uh, pencils from Crayola. All right, so let's take a look now at the pencil page. What we have here is everything that we have shown on our storyboard. We have our setting, we have our character, we know where our words will go. Everything's ready for us to begin coloring. Now here's what I want you to pay attention to. You're going to take a dark colored mark, uh, pencil. It doesn't have to be black, okay? If let's say, um, you know, the tiger is, is in, you know, he's, he's orange, right? He's, he's an orange color. So you may even want to outline it using red. And I, in fact, I think that's what I'm, I, actually I'll use black for the purpose of this, but what you outline it is up to you. Use it so that you match the colors well enough and you trace your lines. So you've penciled these in, your finished page is penciled, and what this process does is enables you to pencil in your lines, okay? All right, so there we have some lines on the tiger now. Okay, finish erasing all these other lines. And you really want to make sure to get all those lines erased because they're going to show up. Even though they don't look like they're going to, maybe you could see them once you photocopy them, they will show up, I promise you. Okay, so make sure you erase all your pencil lines on your page. Get all those pencil lines off there. Now, you'll have a better eraser than what I have right now when you're with your supplies. We're sending out the block erasers. And um, so you get the idea there. I'm going to just go ahead and erase real fast. So this is your penciled finished page that has been outlined with a dark color. The next thing we're going to do is start to actually add color in there. Now, for the tiger, we're going to use orange. This is what I suggest you do. No matter what your character is, no matter what color you're using, start out by making an outline. Follow the lines. So basically, color closest to the line, wherever the line is, okay all around your page first very first thing color on the closest to the line and just follow that all the way around your character adding color all right you want to keep doing this process until you get the entire character colored
what this actually enables you to do is you can go back later and you can color in between uh, the lines that you've traced around with your with your color and it keeps you from going outside of those lines too much now how hard you press down with color pencils matters a great deal if you barely press down you're going to get a lighter color if you press down really hard you're going to get a very 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 strong color a very very dark color of whatever color you're using okay that matters a whole lot with coloring how you choose to uh, apply the color as we call it makes a difference in what your what your final um, result is so we're going to color the entire tiger orange first okay staying in the lines making sure to go around the the lines first if you want to do that you can okay Get, making sure to color all the area of the of whatever it is you're drawing whatever the what we call the subject the subject in this case is is Tim the Tiger here but make sure we fill him all in with color okay alright so this is this is one part of the process here it's just like a coloring book right it's no different really alright so now we have a basic color applied to the tiger okay um, if you notice now, here I didn't erase, you can see the pencil line showing through. That's what I was saying about, you know, if I was taking my time to do it. Now, once you have the color applied to him, just like painting a, a wall or painting a, a house or anything else, you put coats on. That's something that um, students don't really think about when they're coloring. They think, okay, I'm done. There's a the color. But if you really want it to look good, oh yeah, I forgot his tail. If you really want it to stand out, there's certain small additions that you can create with your picture to really make it stand out a lot. I'll show you some of those right now in a second, okay? All right, so go back over, and you may want to make certain areas darker. Now, one thing we didn't talk about very much in this process, and, and we could have, and I'll cover it a little bit right now, is, is lighting, shadows. That's a little more advanced uh, topic than what we're, um, we're really shooting for here, but, but I'll kind of go over it with you just for a second, okay? Now, I'm going to take this paper off for a second and show you what I mean by lighting. Here we have a blank piece of paper, and the best way to describe this is, let's imagine that we have, here's a lamp. Just bear with me. There's a lamp. Okay? And the lamp is on a stand, just like the Pixar lamp a little bit. Okay, there's our lamp. Now, there's light coming from this lamp, right? The light is turned on. Now, let's put right here, let's put a ball. Now, if I were to ask you, where would the shadows be? If this was an actual ball sitting on a desk, and there was a lamp beside it that was turned on. It was the only light in the room. Where would the shadows be? You would know automatically the shadows would be back here. Okay. Now using light in art or showing how light reflects in art is something that takes a lot of practice. You have to think about the shape of an object. You have to think about how light works. Art has a lot to do with science. It has a lot to do with anatomy. When you're drawing the human form, you need to know how muscles connect. The guys at Marvel and DC, they know a whole lot about anatomy, okay? So we're going to go ahead and put a shadow a little bit behind the ball here, okay? So there's a ball sitting on, on a table. Now whenever you're drawing your finished pages, and you're coloring your finished pages, I should say, you want to remember this thing dealing with light. All right, so now we can see how the light reflects on the ball. See that? How does this apply then to Tim the Tiger? Well, when you're using your colored pencil, here's our sun. The light is coming down this way. Whatever's closest to this sun is going to be lighter than what's behind it. So you can press down harder on the areas away from the sun, okay? You can see what I'm doing here. I'm, barely kind of, I mean, I'm 
press them down hard, but not real, real hard. As you get closer to the areas sh that, that the light is going to be reflecting the most on, you don't press down as hard, see? So the light could be going around his chin. He's definitely not showing underneath his chin here or on the other side of his, of his uh, mouth, okay? Let's go ahead and add it going around here. Now as I go higher up on his, on his um, um, mouth and his nose area, we're going to take into account we got the light reflecting again. Let's go over here. Underneath here is going to be darker. Um, there's a student that I worked with in Perry County, and her name uh, escapes me right now at the moment. I apologize. But... Um, she, she's, um, she works with Copic markers a lot, and she really understands lighting very well. I'll try to get some examples of her work, and, and uh, maybe, um, maybe uh, Sarah Howard from, from uh, Perry County can post some of those examples. That'd be really nice if you're listening to this. So let's go ahead now and put those, those dark areas in. Now here is definitely um, some shadow under his arm. This is going to be some shadow over here on this side of the leg. The tail is going to be pretty much covered in uh, shadow. And the cool thing about um, colored pencils is you can really add a lot of what we call, this is a hue. So if you notice, this is light here, this is dark here. That's the same color, but that's lighter than that. That's a hue. This is a light, H-U-E, hue. This is a light hue. This is a dark hue, okay? So, you notice here that I'm continuing with that, making sure that the portions of the body farthest away from the sun resemble shadow, okay? You know his toes underneath his toes, even on the back of his leg. And you can see how this starts to come together a little bit. Underneath his arm here, it's going to be much darker than the top part of his arm. It's closest to the sun. That kind of thing. This part of his his uh, paw will be darker. So now what we can do is this: once we have a general um, shape of the character colored in like this, we can start to incorporate other colors as well. And but you want to be careful if you're going to try this. You know, that's an orange, right? But let's go ahead and add a little bit of red in there as well. Okay. Put a little bit of red. And this really, really starts to bring out the detail more once you start adding the red in there and the different colors. So you want to be careful, though, when you apply this because if you do it too hard, and the red is really going to stick out. I like to go over it a little bit and just add a little bit more color. And once you do this, the red shouldn't show up a whole lot. But it might, but we'll see what happens. Okay, so you should have um, basic, the basic color range on here. You don't want to stretch too far from it, but. And you can make it whatever color you want. I mean, if you have, what if, you, if, you, if your story calls for a purple tiger, then that's great. Make a purple tiger, no problem. All right, so doing this fairly quickly. I could have done a lot better job if we had more time. But anyway, you get the idea of how to use those shadowing. See that? Now you may even want to get really, really what we used to call in the military high speed. You want to be high speed and add a little bit of yellow to show where the sun is reflecting. Then that's even, even better. And you can see how this kind of works now. He's facing the sun. The sun is reflecting off various parts of his body, right? So Tim the Tiger is coming to life a little bit here. Now you may notice as you're tracing your lines that those dark lines that you first put on there a long time ago now, they start to fade away, don't they? You see that? So you may want to go back at the end and actually put some more dark lines in there. So we'll do that in a second. I'm going to go back and add a few more dark lines. Let's go ahead and make sure we get them covered, though, with... Their lighting. Okay, so there we go. 
Tim the Tiger is almost finished. I want to go ahead and add um, for the inside of his mouth here. Go ahead and add that in there. Now we have about everything we need. And I can go back and grab my black then and really bring out these dark areas. You may even want to trace it over again. It's perfectly fine to do that, okay? Just make sure that those areas that you're drawing, I mean you're coloring, um, stand out. It's layering, like I said, just like you're painting a house or a room, you're adding layers to it. And the more layers you add, the more interesting your character is going to appear to be. Okay, you don't have to go this far detailed with it if you don't want to, but it sure adds to it. Okay. All right. Now for your for your um, comic artist, you know you're going to be inking and. There's going to be a lot of different opportunities to, to mess around with, with shadow. And how you do that with your um, comic art is different than what you would do with color. You still can show shadow with, with black and white. You can, uh, how you do that is you, you, you're going to draw your, your shadows as solid blacks. Okay. I asked some of, I asked some of you to look up Frank Miller's The Dark Knight. Frank Miller is an amazing inker. If you want to see how inking in comics is really done well, look up Frank Miller's The Dark Knight. It's a Batman graphic novel. Okay, and do research on your own. Don't forget to look up artists. Check them out. See what, see how they, um, there's tutorials on YouTube and various other places. So there we have Tim the Tiger. Now, that's one part of our finished page, and we have a ton more to work with. So to, to basically save on time, I'm going to do a small section here to show you what I mean by um, creating um, distance or perspective as well with color. And I'm going to use green for the green here, all right? Okay, if you're showing distance with color, you should have different hues of, remember hues is, is um, um, different different um, shades of the same color. So this here is uh, is green. Now they're both green technically, but um, this is called yellow green and this is called just regular green. So what I might do for whatever's further away from the viewer or from uh, the uh, what's in the front of the book, front of the page, you may want to color that very lightly See how I'm barely pressing down? I'm coloring in this because it's far off in the distance, okay? It's way out there, so barely press down with this. And what you can do is try to stay in the lines. Like I'm, I'm doing an okay job with that, but I'm trying to hurry so I can show you. Okay. So we have, uh, there we go. So there's, there's some green on the mountain there. In the, in the background. Now what I can do for this right here to separate this, instead of just drawing, I mean coloring this the same green, I may go ahead and um, outline this first with a dark green. So remember I told you to start at the, at the line, so follow, follow your line around, okay, like this. Make sure you get all those, all the space that's in there. Stay between the lines, just like, just like you remember back in elementary school. Stay between the lines. You know, I could, I could say, said here, I could make a three-hour video on, on all the different ways to use colored pencils. This is such a broad area. It's almost like, let me tell you about science. I could sit here all day and tell you about science. We could talk about, you know, astrology, biology, chemistry. We could talk science for weeks. Um, same thing with art. There's no way to fill, fit in all the information that's out there into a 45 or 50 minute video. So I encourage you to go research stuff on your own. You've got to do that because if you're, if you're interested in doing this as a career one day, you really should have an idea about how different artists put together their pages. All right, so now we have basically an outline of those um, shrubs or whatever.
Then you take the lighter green and you color directly over top of what you just did. But you color all of it this time. What's going to happen, you're going to see two very distinct hues. Okay, and what's a hue again? A hue is two shades of the same color. You're going to see very uh, distinct change in these hues. But make sure you color over both areas that you've just drawn. Okay? And what this does is it tells the reader, hey, I know that. That's that's a... Uh, that's vegetation, that's a, that's a bush of some sort, or a plant. So they automatically recognize it. And then when they look off into the distance and they see this here, they say, wow, that's a, that's a lot of green. That tiger is in a jungle. It helps add to your setting. Color can add to your setting tremendously, okay? Remember the book that I showed you today in the session, Where's the Green Sheep? So. Um, and that book, the cover of that book, really dealt a lot with setting the setting up with color. So now once you have that, you can take the dark one and kind of blend those edges a little more. Very lightly press down. Don't press down very hard at all. All we're doing now is just blending those two colors together a little bit better. Making sure that, you know, there's, it doesn't look like there's a big line right there. So there we can see how those two things work together, okay? And you would repeat this process throughout your entire finished page. Um, when you have two types of the same color, you want to be sure and, and uh, add to that. So you've got brown down here at the bottom, you know. You could do all this with your page. Play around with the color. Um, combine two hues of the same color, like I did with the green here, the light green and the dark green. If you have a light brown and a dark brown, Play around with using both of those on the same uh, part of your page, you know. You, you've got uh, some great resources coming out to the schools and you can use those to, to create a really nice looking finished, finished page. Alright, so I really hope that today has helped you somewhat. If you need some further assistance with everything, then I hope that you will ask questions on the holler. Be sure and go to the holler and uh, and ask those questions. I'll try to address those questions the best I can. Um, like I said, this is a humongous topic. We're talking about everything from um, using different hues of the same color in an illustration to different types of medium. So it could be watercolor and everything. Covering all the basics here is absolutely impossible. My hope is to basically give you an idea today on how to get started, a couple of tips on coloring, okay? Now before we go and break for the day, I want you to remember how to use lighting. We use lighting by um, those different hues, okay? But before we go, I want to address specifically the comic artist, those of you creating graphic novels and comic books. I want to show you something on this page that I do not want you to do, or that I do want you to do, depending on how you look at it. So let's take a look real fast at this before we go. Your ruler is your best friend. Remember when I said that. So when you're laying your pages out for your comic book, I want you to be sure and use a ruler. So many times I go to schools and you know what I see? I see students say, I'm going to create a comic strip. And what they'll do is they'll take a piece of paper like this and they'll say, well, I guess I need a box to go around the entire page. So let me draw my box in. There's my box. And we go. Looks like a big square to me. Perfect. And let me think for a second now. I better have a panel here. And maybe I'll add a few more panels um, here once my pencil works. There we go. So let's make a box here. Yeah, that looks good need a box there, so on and so forth, right? And they draw these boxes out just like so, just like I'm doing. Now you can notice that none of these lines look very straight. They may appear somewhat straight. And this is perfect for a storyboard, but for your finished comic page, if you do this, it's wrong. It just is because you're not taking time. And I know that you can do better than this. Even if you went to ink this. So let's pretend this is a um, 
let's pretend for a second I'm using a, a marker. You go to ink these lines, you see how thin they look for the panels? Now this is a panel, right? Let's not do this. These little tiny itty bitty lines, no, 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 no. Here's what I want you to do. You take your, like I said though, this is okay. Let's say your storyboard is here. You've drawn these storyboards. You've got buildings back here in the background. This is a superhero. There's his cape. And let's say he's flying down to, to uh, rescue someone who's being kidnapped. He's got a gun here. There's a girl he's kidnapping her and he's going to come down and save her. This is great for a storyboard. Good job. Awesome storyboard. But now applying this to a finished page, rulers. Remember, I talked about the ruler being your best friend. Take your time when you're creating your finished comic art page. Lay down the ruler on the borders. Okay, and when you're making your borders, I want you to be sure and do this. You want you to draw two parallel lines. So let me show you what I mean. So I'm drawing a line here. Okay, see the line? All right, I'm going to go right next to that line. You can decide how thick or thin this is going to be. And I want you to create another line. Two parallel lines. Now those two parallel lines, I hope you can see them there, right? These are going to be, and you know, you'd finish it out, you draw all the way around the page using the ruler, okay? You're going to go back when you're finished and you're going to color in between those lines. You're going to ink and color those lines in. So it's going to appear to be one solid shape there, all right? Same thing goes for your interior panels of your page. When you create a panel, a box, Okay, lay down your ruler, draw one line, come over, take your time with this. Craftsmanship is everything on this process, in this process. Okay, come down here, gonna draw another line here, gonna come uh, up a little bit from that. Now I'm rushing a little bit, so it's probably not gonna be perfect, but you see what I mean by that, right? And you're gonna continue this out and make a box, but then you go back when you ink, you ink in those two, between those two parallel lines. And what this does is it gives you a solid boundary, a solid border for your comics. Okay? And let me show you an example real fast. Right here, we're using this camera on the table. I'm going to show you an example. Here's my comics. Here's one of the pages from my comic here, okay? And I want you to take a close look here at the uh, borders that I created. See the borders for this? Do you see how they're thick? See the thick borders? This is the original art for one of the comics that I've done. Here, you can notice all through here. See the thick borders? Here's another example. See the borders on that. The borders are thick. What I did to create this, I laid down a ruler like that. I drew a line. I drew down another line. And then when I was finished, I inked it in. You can take your ruler and place it all the way across your page. Draw one straight line here, another straight line above it, straight line here, straight line above it. And that's how you box in your page. Use your ruler. Make this look very professional. Okay? All right. I hope today helped you somewhat in, in understanding how to use color. Remember, comic artist, your ruler is your best friend in this process. Make your art look neat. Take your time on your penciled pages. Play around with color. Go on YouTube, research, find out tutorials. If you find something interesting, look, there may be a student in McGoffin County that is doing a picture book, and another student in Pike County that is doing a picture book. If you find out something that could help out everybody, share that on the wall, on the holler. Go there straight to the on the home. A RSS feed, post it, or even better, click on forum. When you click on forum, you can basically type in what the forum's about, and then you can attach files there, and you can share resources and what you found, okay? This is, should be a community project. So far, we haven't had a whole lot of involvement. Hopefully, that picks up a lot. And really, what hopefully I find is that even though we haven't ho had a whole lot of involvement, at the end of this whole process, you are creating something that's going to absolutely blow my mind. That's what I hope happens. I want to see amazing work from you because I know you can do it, okay?
Thanks so much for your time. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Hope it helped somewhat, and I'll see you in the classroom.